Snake wrangling. Good morning and welcome to <laughs> Unwanted Opinions. I'm your host, Justin McDonald, here with host Matthew Fisher. The one and only. There's other Matthew Fishers. I know because you're friends with them on Facebook. Well, I am part of the Matthew Fisher group. Fact checker Jesse James and stand-in producer. Aren't you going to introduce yourself? Johnny! Johnny McCurchin! <laughs> Johnny. Mustache Johnny, right-hand man. So thankful to have you here. Appreciate you making it out. Johnny. Are you ducking to stay out of the way of the camera again? I'm so sorry. You're going to have a... You should be fairly good. A though. crick in the back. Nope, he's a lie. <laughs> Get out of the shot. Dave's never in the shot. I don't have to remind you of that, but he's uh, just saying. He's smaller. Yeah, he's... Oh. Dave's hardly in the studio. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> burr, 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 burr. Dave is wow. uh, in San Salvador right now? Uh, El Salvador. <laughs> El Salvador. Any worse sounding. So what city in El Salvador? I don't know. I think he's in El. San Salvador. <laughs> El. Uh, yeah. Duh. Duh. Salvador. That's where he is. Yeah. Isn't that a yeah, like the painter. Like the painter. Yeah. Anyway. Good morning. Happy Friday. I feel the, the post. I'm feeling good. Yeah. So I just want to say the only reason I'm in that Matt Fisher Facebook group is so I can eventually fight them all and be the only one like Highlander. But what if you lose? <laughs> what Losing is not an option. Okay. I follow one Justin McDonald because he follows me, and all he posts is hot dog pictures. <laughs> Are you sure that's just not <laughs> you? I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't yeah. need much to believe in, like, the multiverse, and that right there is just like that. You, you're all... You're the same person. Yeah, we've... Like, uh, that is just you in, like, an all... Like, slightly alternate reality. I definitely thought it was someone, like, like punking me at, at some point a couple years back because I was like... Who created an account under Justin McDonald that's just posting hot dog pictures and also followed me? And then turns out, nope. So we've, we've... Hot dog aficionado. We've followed each other on social media for like literally a decade now. And I saw a, uh, a reel that had something to do with hot... Oh, it was like uh, someone blended up a hot dog and made it into another hot dog and put that back on a bun. And yeah. it was just like this never... I saw that. Yeah. I would uh, eat it. And so I sent it to him. We've never talked. Ten years. We've never talked. And uh, he's just like, hey, man, how's the name treating you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, local? So, no, I don't know. He's like, well, that, that's the other thing. He's just like in Indiana or something where, like, my family is from. So, yeah. Maybe he is family. Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't put it past y'all to, like, just name two churn the same name. <laughs> just change the middle name. His name. His no, it's the same Casey. middle name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's credible. I was really mad when you never, like, you didn't name a child after you and then, like, give them the middle name Credible or Case or something like that. Because, like, you could have just started a lineage of, like, I'm Justin Time, Justin Case, Justin Credible. In relation. Like, you could have been, like, who's the boxer just named all of his kids uh, George, George Foreman. Foreman? Yeah. Like, you could have named them all Justin something. I think Boys and girls. My favorite thing related to me and a name is the fact that I told your parents that I wanted to name Maddox Xavier Death Punch. Yeah. They believed it. And then, like, weeks later, you're working on a ship with your dad, and he's just like... <laughs> he was unreasonably, like... <laughs> like, I can't perturbed. believe he's going to name him Xavier Death Punch. You just need... He's your friend. You need to talk to him <laughs> and, like, maybe convince him that, you know, he's going to... And then my second favorite part is that you, instead of just explaining that I was kidding... No, I doubled like, down. <laughs> I think I'm just going to amp this up. <laughs> I was, yeah. in, I was in line waiting for a big leads yesterday, and the guy in front of me, they, they popped their head out. They're like, knucklehead? Mm. And I was like, who are y'all talking to like that? And then this old guy was like, yeah, it's mine. Yeah, it's oh. mine. <laughs> I was like, all right. Like, oh, wow. there's a motorcycle over there. <laughs> no, he was in a Ford F-150. Why'd they call him a knucklehead? I don't know. <laughs> no. Oh, you knucklehead. <laughs> yeah. Like, isn't that like an old No, I like say an knucklehead old person's, all the time, like, but... Oh, you're being a knucklehead. Yeah, but you don't like, oh, yeah, that's my knucklehead. <laughs> Unless you're dry, riding a knucklehead. Right. Who has that kind of money these days, yeah, true? Your mom yeah. posted Zon Sebastian in the uh, chat. Cool. I, I, <laughs> I love that. I don't know who that is. but I love that. Neat. That name is amazing. I don't Thanks, care. Mom. Don't you have something to do? No. She's, <laughs> she's always welcome here she's in this chat. At, she's at the beach, so she doesn't have anything. Oh, nice. What oh, beach? Super jealous. Pizza. Nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. My, my comments haven't come up with that yet. That's too bad. That's it is too bad. bad. Uh, so I showed, I need to post the video. <clears throat> Last night, Theo said he wanted to play cards. 
And I was like, okay, Does cool. he know cards? Well, funny enough, no, he doesn't. Okay. Because I said, what game do you want to play? And he goes, cards. And I was like, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> right, but there's like thousands of games you can play. And he's like, no, nah, there's like 50 something here. And I'm like, no. That's not what I mean. <laughs> so Did you ask him what the hit points were for the king? Yeah. Well, we're, ro- we're he's scrolling through the cards, and he said something. He goes, yeah, no, I just saw a Jefford, but uh, that's not it. And I was like, you saw a what? A Jefford? <laughs> and he said, yeah, Jefford. And I was like, can you show me the Jefford that you saw? <laughs> and I had to wait a little bit because, you know, I didn't want him to see me pull my phone out because he'll stop, like... Smart. He does not like it. Like, yeah. I'm not your clown, you know. Right. Like, so, but I get it on on camera because he's scrolling through and he shows me a Jack. <laughs> I was like, explain it again. He's like, a Jefford. Wait, no. And I thought he was gonna correct it. He goes, it's a Jefford Knight, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. From here on out, Theo, it is a Jefford Knight. He just. He, that sounds like the main character of like an 80s sitcom. He uses Jeffrey Knight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he uses like context clues and other like stories he's been told to like form his own facts. Yeah, and he's that's, like that is my that's what I do as right. well. He doesn't question <laughs> them. He and he presents them as facts. Mad respect, Theo. Yeah. Mad respect. Like often, and he's so confident about it that I have to like wait. Did, did someone tell you that? Or are you just making this up again? But like, yeah, he'll it. just randomly give you an explanation of what something is. He needs to write books. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. I would help him publish like... it. I'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. help you edit it. Like, we're talking about Jeffrey Knight. <laughs> yeah. An autobiography. Yeah. Uh, yeah and it's... the sleeping patterns of horses. It, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> horses don't lay down. Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. And I'm just going to, like, next couple of times I see him, I'm just going to feed him true-sounding but false you know, I'm, I promise facts. you, he's going to feed you back. <laughs> yeah, because like, yeah, I need new material, not, too. Yeah. So what it is, it's like it's going to be a give-and-a-take relationship. It's mutually beneficial. Right. He's going to get more knowledge. I'm going to get more knowledge. We're both going to walk away happy. And he'll, I, he'll, I'm, I'm telling you, he'll take, like... Like, maybe he learned that, like, you have to churn butter, right? And that's how, like, oh, this yeah. is how butter happens. And so he'll just straight up, like, he'll be eating a piece of cheese or something and be like, yeah, they had to uh, put this in a cement mixer and they mix it all up. And, like, once you do it enough, it starts pushing this out and the cheese curds are what's left over. And I'm like, is he wrong, though? You're probably close, dude, but it's not, that's not right. You know, <laughs> like, you got to stop just presenting In today's world, these. he's right enough. He told my wife the other day that party blowers, like, they're like, those things. Yeah, I saw the post. I wasn't sure what party blowers were. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I kind of finally, he. after like 10 minutes of trying to figure it out, I, I came to the, that. That's what it was. But what did... Basically, he was saying that that's what women use to clean themselves after they use the bathroom. <laughs> because what he's really thinking is that it looks kind of like a tampon. Right? So that's just what he's like. Yep. Yeah, they use these for parties and for cleaning up after they pee. <laughs> His no. reality is amazing, though. Yeah. Like, it seems so much fun. Like, uh, <laughs> like I, I hate cement, it. cheese coming out of cement mixers, party Ooh, blowers right. are like dual I'd use. I over every time I saw a cement truck. Yeah. Like, what do you got? What yeah. You got? yeah. What kind of cheese what? you got? Pump it out what there. Got what Monterey you Jack and Asado <laughs> coming out of this one. <laughs> like, I'll be back. I'm going to go get some sandwich meat. Love yeah. Me. If you had enough money, you could fill a cement truck up with cheese and just dump it out that back gate and just. Because we got money it. like that. I'm just. Once imagine. again, like it's people who have that kind of money are wasting it on I don't know what because they're not doing the important stuff. Imagine just pulling up and being like, "Who wants cheese?" And then you just dump a metric ton of cheese out on something. An actual metric. An ton. actual metric ton of cheese. Like, then you just dr- drive off and people are like left going like, "What the hell just happened?" Like, no, my car is covered in cheese. They're left thinking you're an amazing individual, right? Have y'all ever? I, I was gonna say you would need chips for that, but then I do remember one time I'm heading to work. I don't know if you were behind me or not. Stephen Perry was. But we get to work, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and he goes, is that a trailer full of tortilla shells? And I was like, it was. Like, I'm driving behind it, and, like, every once in a while, one would fly off. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And, like, I'm trying to get around him because I, I didn't want, to, like, something to hit my car. And as I'm passing him, he had, like, an open trailer. Like, I don't know, like a 6 by 8 trailer open with like no tarp on it and it was a literal mound of tortilla shells hey man now that you've won the lottery are you gonna stop uh driving this tortilla <laughs> <shell>? <laughs> no i just 
just bought this store. Yeah. I'm rich, man. Yeah. That's what I did with all my lottery winning. Oh, yeah. my. Yeah, I just, I, I had so many questions, though, because it's like, where does one get that many tortilla shells? Why does one get that many tortilla well, shells? Well, the why, I think, is, well, is it less important? I just, like. No, the why is way more important than the, the where. Well, why would you drive around with an <laughs> right. uncovered trailer full of tortillas? He was heading in the direction of La Hacienda. Okay. So <laughs> They got good chips there. I, I guarantee you know, he wasn't going to a La restaurant. Hacienda? I'm just wondering if he, like, I don't know, is there, like, a tortilla chip collector who, like, collects all the stale ones, and then now it's, like, horse food or something? I don't know. Like, what's the point? You, probably that is actually really close to the what's I happening. I don't know. I don't know they would implement tortillas into a horse's diet around here. Yeah, maybe pig a pig farm. farm. Yeah. Pig farm. Uh, Do we have pig farms in in, in Ocala? What? Yeah. What? That's a legitimate question. Don't don't look at me like that. <laughs> Do they have pig farms in Ocala? Yes. I'm just gonna say yes. You're just assuming right now. Yeah. It's not sure. factual. Welcome to it. Opinions are facts. Right. Yeah. This is the fact hill I'm gonna die on. Uh, now there's hunters show pigs out in Anthony. Show oh, pigs. <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> Sounds like a field trip waiting to happen. Uh, La Hacienda reminds me. Contact of the, them immediately. <clears throat> of the fact that uh, we told someone that they needed to go pick someone up in front of. La Hacienda, and I had like a little meltdown thinking, oh god, this person's gonna go to their house yeah. and wonder why we told them in Spanish. Yeah. And then I, I swear to you, I had this exact thought process, and you obviously must have read it on my face. I, know, I had the same thought process too. Because then you're like, considering parties involved, oh, oh. I was like, we need to be very specific yeah. with our instructions. The fact that we both were concerned that someone might end up just going to their house because we said La Hacienda. Yeah, the whole time I thought it was weird that they broke down in front of my house. Yeah. Ah. There's one in Oxford. You guys know what a bum bag is? Yeah, that's like a portable toilet. Okay, Theo. <laughs> also known as a diaper. I like it. So, it's a bum bag. I, you know, I post about wanting to switch to cargo pants, which, by the way... Oh, yeah, like it's 98 again. With the jogger bottoms. I'm so, I've never been more disappointed in you in my freaking life. This is the least stylish person we know. Yeah. I'm consistently least stylish, though. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that is my style. Okay. That's fair. So, I post about... I'm married car- with children. Do I have to be stylish now? <laughs> you, but prior to that. Okay, that's a good point. <laughs> so, I post about cargo pants and fanny packs, and this morning, my buddy that lives, born and raised in Australia, was like... Good day, mate. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's put another shrimp on the plane. Anyway, uh, so she's like, yeah, the uh, the ease of which you all use the term fanny is just unsettling to me as an Australian because that's absolutely not what it means over here. What's fanny so mean So I over look there? it up. Uh, it's a female gen- a derogatory term for a female genitalia. Oh. Yeah. So I guess, you know, it's like a, not a slur. It's a good thing they like live a, out on an island by themselves. Down under. God, you On the idiots. opposite side of the world. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, how, how have we strayed so far from the Queen's English <laughs> that Fanny means that to you? And she so said, happened yeah. you would have put a bunch of prisoners on an island right. in the middle of the friggin' ocean. Like, come on, what do you expect? So the, bad uh, the toilets spin the other way. The, yeah. The they ins- don't. Yeah, they do, according to the Simpsons. Okay. This so is where we get way. our facts from. Got it. Well, because it's on the other side of the, it's on the south side of the hemisphere. It spins the same direction. The south side of the hemisphere, it doesn't matter. Gravity still works the same, my dude. Why do you care? Because I care about factual information. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and upholding journalistic integrity, Justin. Okay. Or should I say Jefford? <laughs> Jefford. Anyway, fanny packs... So Obviously, it <laughs> means something wildly different yeah, there. <laughs> I think Theo knows what they mean. Yeah, I'm going to have to ask him. I guess they call them bum bags. Or maybe that's something called in the UK. I don't know. So, maybe fanny pack things. over there is so, like, awful sounding, considering <laughs> what fanny means. And now, but so they're like, we're going to call it a bum bag? Well, I mean, that's not that far off from fanny pack. I don't know. It just sounds dumb. Yeah, it's a British term. Fanny? Bum bag. Bum bag. Yeah. God, there's okay. a reason we broke off from that stupid con- like so, country. 
What do you? What is it called if it's not a fanny pack? I don't know what they call them now. No, I, I also, call them a fanny pack. I'm just saying. It's just they, they're weird names. It says here it's also known as a waist wallet, a belt bag, belly bag, chaos pouch. Chaos <laughs> pouch. That's freaking it right That's there. The one. That's <laughs> the fact that like so all the brands now are brand. I can't remember the exact term. One of you more fashionable individuals might be able to help me. They call them like like what what is it like shoulder bags or something like that? Cross Cross body cross body body bags, bags, which is like the most vanilla description for something. Yeah. Like you go from fanny pack to bum bag to chaos pouch, and like these these fashion brands are like, check out our new line of spring cross body bags. Well, a cross body bag will have a longer pouch as opposed to a fanny pack. Honestly, chaos pouch sounds worse to me. Chaos pouch sounds awesome. Yeah, no, it sounds like slang for fanny. Sounds like, <laughs> like a bag full of substances. chaos pouch. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get roped into paying all that alimony and child support? Yeah. <laughs> chaos pouch. Got me with a chaos pouch. <laughs> <laughs> definitely seems way more fun. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It just so developments on developments. Mm-hmm. I feel like every freaking time that I open up. Ocala.com or see the paper. It's developments it's like, on developments. Yeah, it's like, ah, uh, 351 parcel developments on, on plan, uh, 28 parcel, you know, like everything's just like hot. Yeah, screw Mother like, Nature. Yeah. We don't need, we don't need, you know, undeveloped land. And what are sinkholes? <laughs> yeah, right. Let's like, keep pumping the aquifer <laughs> You've got dry. a place to live. What do we care about anyone else? I, it's, I, I just... It's wild to me how many developments we have and how many are still going up. Um, and I don't know, like, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So, I, like, obviously, I don't want, like, overdeveloped land. But at the same time, well, I mean, people have to have places to live, too. And it has to be affordable and all of that. Like, I just don't. But what's going to, like, so they develop all these new houses. Like, what's going to prevent all of these out-of-state cash buyers who are, like, already on multiple properties from just buying those up, though? I don't think that there is anything to prevent that okay. from that. Okay. So it's just, like, so it's, like, we have but this it's... problem of, like, having affordable housing for people, so we're going to build more housing, and yet we're going to still have the same problem we had before. To go back to my, my, uh, my talking point from last week, supply and demand. Supply and demand. So, but, so maybe if there's more of a supply, there'll be less of a demand, and people will actually be able to buy and, you know rent somewhere. Yeah. I don't know what that fine line is, though. It's just, I, I, I do worry about Florida itself. Like, it's, it's a very awesome state in terms of, like, its outdoor areas and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm like, you know, you have so many people, and it's just like, you go to the springs, and then you look at, like, water levels down, nitrogen's up, overcrowded, you know. Speaking of which, not related, but kind of related. Well, first of all, there's been a new development on swimming at Silver Springs. Right. Yeah. It's been approved for like five or six years. And they've had it before. Right. They've had it before, but it's been approved for like five or six years. So I don't know what's going on now that they're, they're like, oh, yeah, they said yes to swimming. Like, well, but they've already said that. Right. So is the, are we actually like starting the plan to start swimming there? Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering too. My oh. concern there is like, it's cool and I want to be able to swim there. But at the same time, I'm like, can we do something about the sunscreen that we're going to use? That's yeah. Gonna kill and all the oils that we have on our body. Like, I don't know. It's like, because yeah. to me, the Silver sun. Silver Springs and the Silver River, because they have been so strict on it, right. it is like one of like, because if you've been down the Rainbow River recently, I remember going like, you know, when you and I were kids, Justin, and like, you, we'd go tubing down there all the time. And it was like clear and there's like the grass and like you go down there now and it's just like that water level's low. It's murky. There's just algae in place of the grass, and it looks nasty. Right. It's not like what it once was. And the Silver River is still one of those ones where you're like, oh, man, this one does seem pristine and untouched. So that's my concern. It's just like, let's not bug up the, the one of the few, like, really nice ones we have left. Yeah. Like we've done with so many other ones. Well, yeah. And, and I think for the most part, too, people are fine not swimming there, right? So yeah. Not, you know, I get, well, I get the it's draw. a small swim area, too. So my right. thing is it's just like – Instead of, like, getting people to go and just, like, walk around. Because, like, the property is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. To just, like, walk around and just view it from a distance. Because, like, and I'm always one for swimming. But I'm, like, it's just going to be it's gonna be crowded, you know. And I feel like it's going to be, like, all the other parks where they're going to, like, max out at capacity. Well, at like, the, open at 8 a.m. And, like, I'm never going to be able to get in anymore. To me. And I, I hate the lottery system that some parks have. But I also, like, I get it. Mm-hmm. And that's actually what was, I was thinking about it. You know, our, our friend, um, 
Eden just went and hiked Angel's Landing in Zion. Yeah, and she you blew my mind when you messaged me. Yeah, that. posted a recap and was like, "Yeah, you have to apply for you know a permit." And I'm like, "What? Hmm. That's crazy." So Angel's Landing in Zion National, we've done it. We did it extremely hungover in boots and jeans. I, I hiked like, it in Levi's and Timberlands. Yeah, yeah. they were yeah. like, "Yeah." You know, be prepared, bring all the water, you know. They also said it was a minimum of four hours. Yeah, we four did it in three hours. and a half. We did it in two and a half. We we traipsed in there at like, yeah. I don't know, three PM. Like, ticket for Zion, please. You know, or whatever. <laughs> Angels landing. <laughs> and you buy your ticket and you take the shuttle in, they're like, last shuttle out of the canyon is wow, seven PM or something, something like yeah. that. We ran to that thing. Yeah, we had to run to get to the last show. <laughs> Otherwise, we would walk 15 miles out. It's crazy now because I looked it up, and I'm like, holy crap, you do have to have a you know, a permit, and it's a lottery permit. That's insane. That, like, wow, what, what do you, like, so I think about us. So twice I've hiked it on kind of a last-minute thing. Yeah. Like us, we're like, ah, we're pretty hungover. Don't know if we want to do it. All right, let's do it. Yeah. And then the second time, I had just hiked, like, nine miles in the uh, river over there. Narrows. The Narrows. And was like, oh, I got time. I'm gonna go do the the Angels Landing hike. Like, I can't imagine going all the way to Zion National Park and not being able to hike that hike. Especially if you hit up the um, switchbacks. Right. Like, if you do the switchbacks, that's just like the. To me, I'm like, you have to get through that to get to the good part. So it's just like, if you did the really crappy, grueling, paved switchback all <laughs> right. the way up, which is like just brutal on your feet. Oh, yeah. And your knees to then be like, nope, down, sorry, yeah. can't go any further on the cool <laughs> stuff. Oh, right. man, I'd be livid. Well, and, and so if you ever look at, uh, look pictures up of Angel's Landing, it shows like this narrow spine with chains that you have to hold on to. And it's like, it looks like it could be intimidating. Like people are like, oh, yeah. I could never do that. And like, you have all the space in the world at no point do you ever feel like you're gonna fall off or anything. I was passing like that. people like I was on the interstate. Right. Oh, I, I'm. Don't get. Yeah, it was super packed when we went, and you know you just work around it. Yeah. So it's like, oh, it's a safety thing, and it's like, no, it's really not. Like, it's not like. It's. I think it's more of like a, a, a that that chain is. I think more often a safety blanket. Yes. Like I need to hold on to the chain so I don't get blown off by a breeze or something like that. Like right. no, it's just like just scramble around the people because there's some slow people there, and it's just like. Yeah. I got a shuttle to catch because I came to this late. <laughs> right. <laughs> Move it or lose it, sister. Just came hungover <laughs> from uh, Las Vegas yeah. on our motorcycles. Yeah. I'm about it's... to puke this uh, six pound burrito up that I got from oh, the absolutely. taco truck. Yeah, just uh, so I don't know. I guess if they, use, I, if they use a capacity program for Silver Springs, I feel like that's going to stink. If they use a lottery program, I feel like that's going to stink, mm -hmm. but it would probably be better because. I don't know, like with the Salt Springs thing, you know, where you see people just lined up outside of Rainbow Springs. It's Salt Springs, you know, it's it's all the springs in the summertime. And like, and it is, it sucks because it's like, I just, I don't ever remember that being the case back in the day, like being. Well, no, we didn't have 21 million people back in yeah, the day. Yeah, just go there. Right. Yeah, I mean, like back Saturday. when like your parents would take us there, you and I would be in like high school and we would choose to go there, it was like just on a whim, like, hey, do you want to go to Juniper Springs? Hey, do you want to go right. to Rainbow? Like, yeah. It was just like spontaneous, and now yeah. it's just like put in for a lottery or get in line at six o'clock in the morning right. because like they're shutting the gate at eight o two, like two minutes yeah. after they open. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's ridiculous yeah. now. But then again, it's just like the impact on them springs is like, right. ugh, you know, it's like not I, good. <clears throat> I used to get bugged when someone would like post a spring, especially if it's a place that I know about. Jenny Springs is the worst for what you're gonna say. I well, feel like. No, and they post, and they're like, protect our springs. You know, we're not telling you where, where we're at. Oh, that. Never mind. And so it used to annoy me, uh, again, especially if I knew where it was. Are you talking about when people selectively picture, take pictures? I, was saying, I, was, I thought you were going to say when people take a picture of, like, it's like the Instagram versus reality. Yeah. And you're like, it don't let it look like that. Well, that's like <laughs> when we went to Antelope Canyon or, yeah. That's yeah. Nice. The Slot Canyon in Arizona. You're in there with hundreds and hundreds of other people. Yeah. But the guides are like, look, we're going to clear the area out and or you're going to angle your phone. So all of your pictures look like you're the only person yeah. in yeah. there. You, you, you you're shoulder to shoulder with people. But you're shoulder to shoulder. You and, and I like, also kind of like lollygagged a bit. Yeah. To where like they would like kind of walk off and then like we would kind of be right. in a little empty section and like snap some quick shots. We had the best guide ever that had the most androgynous name ever. Yeah. Because we were like, oh, what was... 
they, it felt he, bad that they, we they were us. just very androgynous yeah to begin with because we we're like oh man he was so nice but we called her she or something and it was, we we're like we we're genuinely trying to like just be <laughs> respectful respectful to whatever <laughs> this person and this was like before like you know people knew to ask like whoa what's your preferred pronoun so we were like trying to look this up and we looked this person's name up and it was like avery it, or it, like no that. it was it was an absolute like unisex androgynous name and too. it, was it like, wasn't it like literally google listed it as like the most androgynous <laughs> name like but they were the coolest guy to... yeah like you have to like pay a navajo guide to take you into the canyon because it's on like navajo land okay. you know yeah. and so you get a private guide and they like they give you a lot of history and stuff like that which was like awesome and they're like this yeah. section is called you know they 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 the kiss or something, because yeah. it looks like two people. They were great. Two they, profiles of people kissing in the rocks. They That's showed us awesome. like, they he was she was like, you know, go to Vivid on your camera and oh, like, yeah. do this angle. Oh, we had, uh, well, like, they were young, yeah. So they knew how to work a smart a smartphone, and yeah. like I'm not the best with that. So like I definitely I felt like an older person because they're like here let me help you and, and like you, and you got lessons they yeah they hooked it up they're yeah. like they like made all the adjustments on my phone to take the best photos in the slot <laughs> canyon and it was super appreciative because like some of the other guys are like i mean they they looked older so i'm like i don't think they know how to like yeah, change no. the setting high because i didn't you know yeah. and uh so that was helpful because that was years ago now and that was like you know i had like a iPhone 4 or 5 or something. I yeah. don't know. But the pictures still look really good. They do. They do. So, anyway, but it's that same scenario where, yeah, you, you post a picture to make it look like you're the only person there. But you're not, actually. Yeah. So, no, I was going to say, I hate it when people do the protect the springs thing and don't tell you where they're at. But at the same time, okay, I get it. You yeah, know, that that makes lie. sense to me. Because it's the same thing. I, I, I do laugh every time I see, like, a pop-up on Instagram. And, and I thought that's where you were going was with Ginny Springs. Where, you know, and it's like everyone outside of Florida will see that and be like, I can't wait to go there. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, Ginny is an absolute <laughs> crap hole. Right. You know, not only do they have terrible practice of selling all of their water to Nestle, which is pumping out like half of their flow, but it's like it's crowded, smoky, and just like dirty. And like the noise pollution is obscene. Yeah. And when you paddle down like a big section of the Santa Fe, you know when you're getting close to Ginny because you start seeing all the trash in the bottom of the river. Ugh. But then you see these Instagram photos from um influencers and it's like no one's at the spring and right. it's crystal clear and i'm like they're going in winter time yeah. when there hasn't been overflow and it's not murky everything's settled no one's there because it's cold yeah and it just it makes more people flock there and it's just like but i guess that's their 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 punishment as they show up and they go this isn't what i was promised yeah. we went to uh gorgeous state park in georgia is that what it is it is pretty gorgeous is that what it was called though saint gorge no that's gorgeous yeah, gorgeous. Oh, I don't. What is what is the one with the word? Tallulah, Tallulah Falls? Gorge? Tallulah Gorge. That's you, the one. We, by we powers combined. Yeah. We got there. You, yeah. yeah. You workshop. Uh, Nailed it. We went there, and this is before I knew the Instagram page influencers in the wild, because <laughs> I would have absolutely uh, taken video. So we're like in the dead of summer, and we see these people with like all kinds of makeup and wings and big fake eyelashes and all of that <laughs> props their, their plan was to go down and take pictures at the fall well first of all if you've ever been to Tallulah Falls that's a lot of steps that you got to go down <laughs> it's in the middle of summer oh. and again back to the permit like you have to like apply to actually go in or near the falls. Yeah, gorge, the, the only reason I haven't been yet is because like they and they've suspended the gorge permit for a while now. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, like during COVID, like because I was gonna go there, they were like, we're not offering gorge permits at this time. Hmm. Oh, I mean, it's still cool to walk. Oh yeah, you know, for go, sure. But I was like, out. if I'm gonna go, I'd I'd want a permit to go into the falls. But I see them before they you know start the trek, right? And they're all very done up, and I'm like, what is the plan here? <laughs> and I've been there before, so I know that, like, hey, this, yeah, like, this... It'll just, like, walk over to the falls, and that's it. It's, like, 523 steps that you got to go, and, like, an elevation change of, like, you know, 800 feet or something. So by the time they get down there, I kid you not, literally eyelashes are <laughs> melting <laughs> off. They're just sweating profusely. I hope they were crying. Oh, yeah. Becky, I just like, wanted a good photo. They're like, well, how do we get into the falls? Because it's all, like, locked off yeah. down there. And people down there are like, no, you don't just, like, walk into right. the... And they're, like, <clears throat> showing pictures. They're like, no, we've seen pictures of people down here. Yeah. They're like, 
yeah, they got a permit, and, you know, they came, and they prepped, and, like, they didn't just get dressed and walked down. So they, these poor people uh, came all the way. And there's a bunch of them, too. Like, I don't know hope you learned your was. lesson, you influencers. Yeah. I mean, it's, I felt bad for them. Because, like, I guess you had something in your mind that obviously did not happen the way you were thinking. Two words. Or maybe it's one. Photoshop. Right. Yeah. Because well, don't they have, like, the tool where it will just, like, remove the people? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Well, just I don't know why you, like, right. said it like that. Because yeah. you and technology. Right. Shut up. It's laughing. I'm trying, Jesse. I'm trying. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a lot. But it's it's set up. Like, just, it's, it's set up. Like, sorry that you didn't realize that ahead of time. And actually, <clears throat> when I, speaking of the bum bag, we did video. Thank you, Matt. The chaos pouch? A, yeah, the chaos pouch. You did a beautiful video of me doing a twirl into a chapstick reach. Well, I got a bunch of messages <laughs> about the chapstick. And I was like, actually... That's not my chapstick. That's my chapstick. And they're like, what? Gross. They're like, yeah. And I was like, they were like, you put someone else's chapstick on? I said, well, I would have, but I didn't. And they're like, we saw you in the video. And I was like, acting, guys. Yeah. Like, all that's a farce. It was my emotional support chapstick that I lent him. Right. Oh, nice. Yeah. So then a lot of people are like, yeah, I was carrying on chapstick. I'm like, is that just like a select percentage of people that just walk around yeah. with chapstick every I, I single told you, day. I looked it up because like, I thought it was weird. And it's like, it, it's, it's like an emotional support water bottle. It's like emotional support chapstick. And like, I, so I was like, I can't be the only one. It's like, I, I've been doing it for years. And if, as soon as I try and break that habit and leave it at home, I'm like, my lips have never been this chapped. <laughs> so my buddy in Denver, who we went out to visit, uh, so we went to high school together. He always had Carmex. <laughs> That's because he's in Denver. No, no, he's someone in high school. When he oh, was in, he gotcha. Was here, always had it. So my I, kind of people. I'm like, what a weirdo, bro. You have it, and he applied it 30 times a day. I'm like, what? A His weird. lips were never chapped, <laughs> like I mean, mine. Obviously, but we also live in 60 percent humidity. Right. So we get to Denver. I was like, you still doing the Carmex thing? He's like, nah. I switched over to chapstick, bro. Every vehicle, he's got a stick. <laughs> he keeps the stick yeah. in his pocket. I'm like, I'm like, what? Is I have, happening? I have living room chapstick, <laughs> yeah. bedroom chapstick, pocket chapstick, bathroom a... chapstick. I like literally have one in every room of the house. So, two of Carmax in the car and a stick. I don't know how you people do Carmax. I... Y'all are like psychopaths. There's a, a person. There's a percentage of people that just walk around. I, I have, you know, and it is wild. humid here, but I feel like it's also like the sun. Like I'm not the most tan person, and it's just like that sun dries me out like a prune, dude. So like I think that's why I need the it. The second I leave Florida, my lips are chapped. Yeah, like yeah. not even kidding. Right. Every single time I leave Florida, with me it's bloody noses too. Yeah, my nose is like. I'm just going to bleed now. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Gets dried out. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. yeah. Yeah, it's, every time I go to Colorado, the first two days, I'm like blowing out blood snot. I, I had a friend that could never, he would always, <laughs> he was just like, put chapstick all <laughs> over his face. He looked like Ronald ah! McDonald, you know, like, <laughs> what are you doing? So I just like, no, I'm never going to be a name? chapstick guy. Matt, call him out. Name. Yeah, I'm not calling him out. Okay, no, it's not me. Because <laughs> we all know him. Oh. He probably still does it, but he's got a beard now, so it's less noticeable. Yeah, except for when you get like the chunky bits in your beard. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. Why are you so aggressively applying chapstick? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. All right. It's a it's a wonderful mix up there. Hit me up with one of your Florida Python challenges coming up, people. Is that where you go? Wrangle Pythons? August fifth through the fourteenth. Sign up online for the novice or the professional category. Take some online training. Go down to the Everglades. Take some online training. It's, 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 it's required. It, the <laughs> online, like great online training is required. They send you an Oculus. They, like they te I guess, I guess they yeah. teach you how to wrangle them. But, yeah, it's, it's basically – so there's no bag limit and no hunting like uh, season for Python, uh, Burmese pythons. And I do partially feel responsible for this. Because we had a Burmese python. It was like uh, our first pet when we moved to Florida. Put it in the Everglades? <laughs> no, no, no. We got rid of it when, like, my dad told us. He's like, yeah, I was having to start, I was going to have to start buying chickens to feed it. Because <laughs> it got that big. And so we sold it to the guy that owned Pet Safari. And I don't know what he did with it, but I'm pretty sure it probably might have ended up in the Everglades because they don't stop growing. And they're terribly aggressive pets. So, like, part of me is just like, yeah, we're those people who... <laughs> probably contributed to the Burmese pythons in the Everglades. So, so if there's no bag limit, what's the point in having there, a season from August 5th to the 14th? No, this so is a competition. 
Oh, it's a it challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's a challenge. And so, like, they'll, I don't know, they mm -hmm. didn't list the prizes, but, like, you sign up, you do your training. You know, they're going to encourage you to hunt these things. You probably get to keep the snake. Year like round. They said they'll have prizes for the most pythons caught and the most, the, the longest most pythons. Florida competition ever. Uh, for sure. Well, they're super invasive down there. Oh, yeah. And, like, when they're, like, when they're eating, when gators, they're edging out the yeah. gators in the Everglades yeah. to be the top of the food chain, they're like, yeah, we got to do something. And they yeah. breed a lot. And so it's like, it's to like call the, <laughs> call them basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the challenge is coming up. So sign up, go on down. They have amateur classes, prizes to be won. I'll do it. That'd yeah. I, I was just like, I, let's find someone with an airboat and go wrangle. Oh, the, what's, what kind of surprised me is like, you, you can, you can kill them in any humane way you choose with the exception of traps and firearms. Which I don't know how you kill a snake without sure. those. That's I'm not, not humane. I'm not supposed to use my shoulders when I... I <laughs> as long as it's humane, which... His are not. Yeah. His are inhumane. Yeah. But... Old Ninja Turtle I just thought everyone was out there shooting the snakes, to be honest with you. I'm like, it is Florida. What do you mean you can't use firearms? You can't use firearms to dispatch the snakes. What do you do? Beat it? <laughs> I don't know. Any, taze, any, taze it, it, it was like, very open. Which, it said any humane me, way, with the exception of traps and fire. I worked with this guy that did have a Burmese python, and they had it got so big they had to give it a rabbit, but the rabbit was scratching it, so then they had to kill it, the rabbit. But they didn't know how, and the methods which they tried to use to kill this rabbit, they should probably all be in jail. Yeah, my dad was like, I stopped, I stopped bringing y'all in for the feedings when it went from. Mice, well, we went from mice to rats, and he goes, when I had to start buying guinea pigs, and then guinea pigs went to rabbits, and then rabbits yeah. were going to have to go into chickens. And he's like, I can't, I'm sorry. Yeah. As my dad said, I think to quote him, he goes, I was having to start by other people's pets to feed our pet, and then it became a problem. <laughs> so uh, yeah. PETA said the only main way that eat euthanize a python is with a penetrating captive bolt gun or oh, a gunshot to the brain. That's what just Kyle just said. It's so, a cattle gun. Uh, yeah, that's a cattle gun. Right. Or for those of you that aren't aware, them. it's a no country for old men gun. Yeah. I I think they yeah. say no firearms just because it's Florida once again right. and it's people in the Everglades with access to airboats, so you just know Are there's you gonna sure be like say mo firearms. <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining like four dudes on an airboat with ARs just going ta -ta 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 -ta, you know, into the water and just waiting for the snakes to pop so up. On FloridaPythonChallenge.org it says to insert a small rod into the cranial cavity using deliberate Multi-directional movement. So that means stab <laughs> it in the head and shake it around. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That doesn't seem that doesn't seem humane. Yeah. All right. I'd rather just shoot it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. <sighs> well, be, let's go hunt fun. some python. I'm yeah. down. I'm ready to hunt a python. Just to remind you, these are animals that can kill us. <laughs> but not <laughs> if we kill, kill them first. <laughs> Bingo. Uh, yeah. Like a giraffe. Yeah, it'd be like them. You know, it's really just like. To me, it's one of those things where I'm like, we could basically go live the movie Anaconda with J Lo. I'll be Ice Cube. These aren't anacondas, though. They're bigger than anacondas. <laughs> <laughs> Why? They're bigger than baby anacondas. Yeah. What's you don't think a Burmese python can get as big as an anaconda? I think anacondas get bigger than Burmese pythons. I think, the I think the they both get snake. big. Yeah, they both get big. Okay. Anacondas. I think anacondas don't yeah, didn't you see the movie? Yeah, it's not like they made a movie. Okay, I, newsflash, guys. Uh, the movie is fake. It's a fake snake. That's digital. That snake is digital. I'm waiting for a fact checker here. No, it wasn't digital. That was real snake. No, I'm, I'm waiting on the how big the snakes is. Oh, oh. What did they use on the plane? Well, they had everything. Yeah. Uh, those, those were MF and snakes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a specific type. Thank Python you. is longer, but an anaconda is thicker and much heavier. <laughs> oh, well, you didn't specify. Hey, I'm just reading. Yeah, okay. What kind of Python? Burmese? No, it doesn't say. It just says Python. So technically, I'm right. You know, you still got a gray area. Right? It's a gray area. Burmese, you just have Python. Burmese are like the biggest of the Pythons. Well, that's All right. unfactual. All right. <laughs> About enough of the thick and long talk. Let's go to some of this. I got Kit Kat up there because it took me a little while to figure out what the cat was. Kentucky Adventure Trail. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Mike Miller, Carl, and, and Jason. Do you know Jason? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't met Jason. Went on the uh, Kentucky Adventure Trail. Looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. It's like uh, 1,100 miles. 
something like that. 1,100 miles, and it's like through Kentucky. I think they even went to like Virginia and maybe Tennessee. But it's like all like off road. It's like, have you ever heard of like BDR? Um, He's wearing a BDR shirt right now. Oh, never mind. Like back road discovery routes, you know? And it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like these off road enthusiasts put together like these long trails and stuff like that that are majority off road for like overlanding vehicles and dual sports. And so they went on one that was like a specific dual sport route, which was pretty yeah. sweet. That so, is cool. I'm going to go on one of those trails with them at some point once the child is a little older. Yeah, I like doing a mixture. Of what? Of uh, the the back roads, the back country. Or whatever. Yeah. And then, like, sometimes I'm just like, eh, I've seen this forest long enough. I want to get on the highway Oh, there's, and move there's to sections of paved roads. Like, and it no, connects. No, I, I get okay, all of that. Yeah. I'm just saying, for me personally, when I go out. 40%. 40% what? Our paved roads on the trail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, don't get me because. Usually when I'm doing, like, a trip by myself, I'm on a big bike. Yeah. And so I just get exhausted from being in gravel or dirt well, on a big bike. Well, that's the thing is it's like <laughs> the littlest bit of gravel and sand on a big bike is yeah. is a workout. I did, like, four hours on gravel. And you were in, like, an electric glide or something, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it was the big chieftain. My first time out west by myself. Like, yes, yeah, so I'd like the 1,200-pound motorcycle, please. Well, I did. They are like... <laughs> Don't use Google Maps. Buy a map. So I bought a map, and I was like, yo, this route looks cool. goes through some mountains, like a nice mountain Look at these pass. squigglies. <laughs> right. Well, it didn't tell me that it was a gravel road all the way through. <laughs> and I stop, and I'm just – I hadn't seen another soul in hours, right? And I stop, and I'm like, oh, this is weird. I have signal. So I, like, I call my wife FaceTime or whatever. And I was like, there's either another sandstorm coming or there's another vehicle on my bike's in the middle of the, the pathway here. So I'm going to hop off the phone. I get off, move my bike. And these guys at a, uh, oh, what are they, like a dirt rail, sand rail, come like to a sliding stop. He pulls his <laughs> goggles off, sees me on the big bike, and he's like, are you okay, bro? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm good. And he's like, uh, you know, like there's not road for a while, right? And I was like, yeah, man, like uh, how far? Uh, until, I, until I actually hit some pavement. He's like, a couple hours? I was like, hours? Like, how fast are you going? Like, can you give me miles? You know? He's like, oh, that's wild, man. Uh, it was like another hour or so before I hit paved road. Yeah, but, hours. Yeah, hours. Close. But now I can totally relate to his uh, term for how far it was. Because now I'm not using time nor miles. I'm using dollars. I want to know... Dollars per gallon? Yeah, well, dollars per mile. Like, yeah. I don't want to know how far away time-wise it is. Like, it's $33 away? I'm not going. <laughs> That's like a I, good quarter mile. Yeah, right. <laughs> I want to know the numbers because it adds up quick. Yeah, $5 a gallon. Yeah. So, you just break it down that way. Like, I literally... Like, hey, we want to go to Bush Gardens this weekend? Like, nope. That's twenty seven dollars away. <laughs> I don't, because then I gotta pay for food and all of that. Like, nah. Cancel those passes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nope. They'll be around for the rest of the year. That's twenty seven. And the fact that it's hotter than the sun. It is uh, outside. Man, dude, yesterday was bad, brutal. Yeah. Yesterday was real bad. It's awful. I, I I like it. We I think Johnny and I agree. Like if I'm prepped to sweat. Right. Yeah, but I don't know which one of you said that though. But it was perfect. Like if I don't have anything planned. Right. Like, on a Saturday, like, if I'm going to go ride my dirt bike, work in my garage, mow the lawn, I'm fine. I'll, I'll be sweaty all day. I don't care. I don't like, care. But during the day, like, during the weekday, like, no, <laughs> I, I, I don't. sweat when you go get Yeah, lunch. like, I went out and, like, had to call, like, the veterinarian. And, like, I went outside. And I'm outside for, like, three minutes <laughs> in the shade. And it's still at, like, 9, 10 a.m., right? And, like, I come in and, like, I literally feel, like, the sweat dripping down my back, down my ass crack, like, and I'm just like, I'm not even doing anything physical and I'm out there like profusely sweating. Yeah, shade I'm, doesn't work in Florida like it works in Shade does not work in Florida. No, I was actually no. talking, I can't remember who I was talking to about that. I'm like, well, yeah, when you're out west, it's weird because shade's a real thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, huh? And they're like, like, yeah, you go in the to. shade, right. and, like, it's literally like 15 to 20 degrees cooler. It's, right. it's weird. It's co- almost cold. It yeah. is almost <laughs> cold. You're like, oh, no wonder people have things called like jackets. Right. Well, you know? The first time I went out to LA, well, we went and had lunch and I sat in the shady spot because I was. <laughs> Walking in, I was burning right. up. So I sat yeah. in the shady spot. I was like, like "What's this? Man, it's chilly over here. What the hell? I had to move. Keep moving." Right. Like, oh, There's just like two layers track. of hot here. It's just like you have like hot, and then you have like hot, hot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hot. Like, yeah. and the sun is a hot, hot. Yeah, it's like hot, and it's going to burn your skin, or hot, and it's going to burn a little less. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. It's more of an ambient burn instead of like a direct burn. I had to go, I had to shoot some photos, I think Wednesday night. And they were like, you don't want to take any outside? I'm like, absolutely. Mm. Like, it's, it's 630. No, yeah. we're good. Pass. Yeah. Hard yeah. pass. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right, hit, hit your next one up. Yes. Okay. So this is one of the most fun articles I've read in a while. Johnny's shaking his head like he knows. <laughs> so there is a group of about 200 people in Poland who have oh. taken over like a trailer park, <laughs> yes. like outside of Warsaw, and they LARP, which you know what LARPing is, right? Live action role playing. Live action role playing. Like here people LARP as like... Hey, thank you for asking me if I know what it is and not assuming that I do. <laughs> you don't I look like someone that. who knows what LARPing is. I appreciate that. <laughs> You have cargo joggers on. I'm going to venture to say you don't know what LARPing is. The minivan of menswear. Hey, there it is. I've That's been funny. trying to set you up all morning. Yeah, before. I know. I, I hate cargo pants. So. Yeah, but the minivan of menswear. Let's it is the minivan That's of menswear. That's your best off-the-cuff response to me wearing cargo pants. I mean, like, I get it. They're utilitarian, and, like, they're useful, and but they're just they're ugly and, like, I don't want to be seen in one. I will say this. Having now tried out both cargo pants and a fanny pack, or a chaos pouch. Chaos pouch. Uh, chaos pouch. I, the, the, if, the, if the cargo <laughs> pockets aren't in the right spot, I can't tell you how many times I was like, where the heck is my freaking wallet? Where's my key? Put your wallet in the cargo pocket? I want living on the edge. Yeah, I want because <laughs> I don't like sitting on my wallet, and I don't want to, you know, I'm gonna bulging go, out of my... You just, dude, just... Adopt what Mitch Miller does. Just get a purse already. Literally, and he told That's you in purse. comments too. I don't know you. <laughs> like I feel like he's had the same problems as you, and he's just like you know, skip the fancy pants, just go straight to just like, here's a purse. I mean, I I would just go backpack if I were gonna do that. Then it's all want, sweaty on your listen, back. I don't want one. Like I like things to be a crossbody bag. A crossbody might be the closest because I can center it. Crossbody bag is like... just a socially acceptable man purse. Like, I don't like, I wouldn't, like, I don't one, one, you know, shoulder my backpack. I have mine in the car, Jake. I'll let you try it. Yeah, I'm going to have to try it. The crossbody? Yeah, yeah I'll have to try it. OGO yeah. sells I think one. I have four of them in my car. Okay. Well, he <laughs> should get one of the ones that's like a four-point harness and has the bag right here. I have here. that, too. Yeah. Right. What? See? You get too much traps Why would you wear that, though? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I just. <laughs> like, what do you carry in there? First aid kit? It's, like, all tactical? Like. It's not what you carry in there. Just don't worry about what's no. in that bag. Yeah. I don't he know. He makes fun of first aid kits. Where are your 5.11s in your... He's like... Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Take a trip to Coles. Set yourself up in your... <laughs> I hate Coles. Yeah. Uh, you don't look like it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Coles. I shop at Sears like a normal person, okay? Like Sears isn't bucks. even open he's, anymore. He's got $100 in cold bucks in his yeah, pocket yeah. right now. Uh, we'll take them after they expire, Matt. It's okay. <laughs> They don't know how much they're talking about me and not you. Right yeah, now. like, um, that's the Coles. I yeah. freaking hate Coles. I mean, Why? Because Coles Cash is a scam. Okay. Like, I did shop I'm, there, and then I'm sitting there. their products I doesn't like better. their marketing. I knew better. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. Really yeah. I'm sitting there, like, I, like the one time <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there doing the math on their sales and the Coles Cash, and I'm like, I'm being ripped off. I just walked out and just went to a normal <laughs> store. No, I'm listen, like, I'm not shopping here no more. Listen. Is someone else your Coles Cash? Yeah. J. I J. gave it to him, probably. J.C. Penny tried to... I'll Get there. away from the discount uh, method, you know, like the, yeah. I, there's, there's an actual term for it. They tried to get away with, away with it, and their sales dropped. This is, mm. uh, you know, it was like 15 years ago now, 20 years ago. But their sales dropped, so they're like, okay, we're going to go back to the fake discounting method. And people are like, yep, thank you, that's what the we want. The fact that they didn't call them JC Pennies, like pennies, like their own currency, they missed the boat. How do you know that they didn't? Because I shop at JC Pennies. <laughs> <laughs> like a normal man. Uh, anyway, I forget this stuff's in my cargo pants, so I did like the fanny pack for the ease of use that way. And I could put it on my fanny and swing it around when I need it to get stuff out. I just don't get the strap to your chest one. You wouldn't. It's like a backpack, but on the front. Yeah. It, but just yeah, doesn't, I, it looks I uncomfortable. I have like a just-in-case backpack in my car, and he's like, what's that? First aid kit? It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're welcome when you got a boo-boo that I got to fix. I took it. I'm Stop the Bleed certified. I know how to, you know, take care of gunshot wounds and breaks and stuff with whatever I got lying around, MacGyver style. So don't be prepped. And be prepped if you want to. <laughs> part of, That's your like prerogative. The first part of the Stop the Bleed is to, like, have 
items on hand if you can. You think that little boy that survived four days in the Montana wilderness and his little jammies was prepped? Imagine nope. being like a four-year-old and getting absolutely roasted online <laughs> after <laughs> surviving. Like, you survived the wilderness for a few days, but you know, barely survived being online. But I don't think he reads the comments like that. I doubt he I don't think he comments. can read. In case you guys didn't He's see four. This, yeah. this poor kid goes into the wilderness. Poor gets ginger stuck. child. Yeah, comes out and they the take the. One of them. They take Montana <laughs> wilderness. Like he said, not even the animals. One of them. <laughs> Stay bear, away from that one. Bear coming down the trails yeah. like they see that red hair and they're like, nah, <laughs> nah. But they take the absolute. He's spicy. It's, it's a sweet picture, but it's a terrible sweet picture. And he looked like, like he's seen some stuff though. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, that kid has PTSD. Like, and he is in, like. In the comments, <laughs> these people are absolutely ruthless to this kid. Like, he's four years old, just survived the wilderness, and y'all are lighting him up. That kid is more bushcraft than, like, all of these, like, wannabe bushcraft people out there. <laughs> yeah, he, like, with their, like, tactical gear and their front chest pouches and, like, kids out there in his flannel jammies yeah. he's gonna doing be on more. At, like, eight. Yeah! Right. <laughs> I tell you what, the people that usually win alone aren't the ones that are, like... Who you typically think? Yeah, that's true. They're like the more unassuming ones. That show the, is amazing. The, I only watched the season six, and the guy, the fact that the guy that won outlasted everyone else by like months. Yeah. And they come out there, and he's like, "Listen, my weight isn't what it should be," and like he's very going defensive because he lost like four pounds. Meanwhile, everyone else has lost like thirty. My, d- my pounds. dude got an elk like within the first week <laughs> right. though, because he's just like that's priority number one. Yeah, yeah. I'm like so smart I, move. I I read up on the contestants and the the because the lady that came behind him, she was my favorite, super absolute impressive. favorite, making clothes out of squirrel skin dude, and stuff. She she went out with all the all her clothes were clothes that she made. Yeah. Huh. But like she's furs like, and stuff. But but her recap, she's like, they make it look much, much, much closer than it was. I was very amazed. Yeah. Did. She was like, he was absolutely fine. Like he was he's true woodsman, able to survive. Yeah. She's like, they made it look a lot closer than it was. I was I needed to go. I was in a bad way. Yeah. I I'm stopped like, oh, watching crazy. the show. Well, I I started watching the show when the, there was a dude who was on the island or wherever they were at for maybe they made it seem like 10 minutes, and then they came across a, a pile of bear crap uh, and was like, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, come I'm get out. me. It's like, what? yeah, in case you haven't, you don't know what we're talking about, it's uh, a show called Alone, and basically the, the goal is to just go out and outlast people in the wilderness. You, you can pick like four items out of like a group of 10. And then they like just drop you off, and like the last couple have been in like uh, some island in like uh, British Columbia, right? You know, so it's like you're like up there, it's cold, um, and there and there are bears and moose and stuff, and so it's like yeah, they just drop you in different parts, and here's your four items you chose, and uh, who can last the longest? I think the biggest thing that I took away f- have taken away from that show is that snares really work. Yeah, huh. like everyone's Traps. yeah, everyone's. Like catching rabbits and squirrels off of snares. And I'm like, I thought this was like a joke for cartoons. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Like, I did not yeah. think that <laughs> these actually work. Also, I have to remind myself, I'm like, oh, they're in like more or less untouched wilderness where people just don't go. Yeah. So, like, there's just like animals abound. Like, if I put snares in like the nearest section of like four acres of woods by my house, like, I ain't catching diddly. Right. You don't know until you try. I'm, what, what am I going to well, do? We're going to try to catch a uh, boa constrictor. So Ooh, With a snare? Even no, snares aren't to. allowed. <laughs> right. So we're not going to use that. Good one. We're not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like both of you had a stroke at the same time. Huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely did. Um, yeah, what a, what a crazy show. Can't believe the snares work like that. But back to the LARPing. I wish they'd make a show out of that. I'll have to go quick. But go yeah. Ahead. So these Polish people decide that they're going to LARP, live action role play, but they want it to be American themed because as the guy, like he said, he's like, you know, everyone looks at America as like the land of milk and honey. And so we wanted to like do like this X-Files, Stranger Things type vibe. And so like middle America. And so they picked Ohio as like their (laughs) state of choice. And they asked them like, they're like, well, how did you like get you know the inspiration for like your outfits and like building out this trailer park basically and they're like we just googled fourth of july (laughs) (laughs) and like ohio and they're like and that's what we based everything off of and you look at the photos 
and you wouldn't really go, oh, this is an another country. Like, there's guys, like, double denim, smoking cigarettes, you know, like, just... It looks like a blast. To it me. does, because all you're going through the pictures, and all of a sudden, there's, like, a guy in a hazmat suit with, like, a 55-gallon drum, yeah. and then it shows two people in the back of a car, and one guy's got, like, a shotgun on his lap, and I'm like, yeah, this is totally America. Right. You know, um, but so it's like, they have, like, that's oh, what yeah. the LARPing is, is, like, they have, like, this kind of supernatural vibe. But the guy was like, you think of America as land of milk and honey, but he's like, when you start researching and look into it, he goes, really? It's all about, like, the shattered American dream? And it was like, all of a sudden got, like, really dark and twisted. And then they go out there for 28 hours at a time, I think, and just, like, do, like, these American Fourth of July party in Ohio LARPing events. The fact that people are doing that is hilarious to me, though. They know what's good. Exactly. Right. Well, I think about the last 4th of July, and I'm like, dang, they are on to <laughs> something. Was that 4th of July? Ooh, yeah. That was you the, were there. Was Johnny, was, Johnny and I had a yeah. hell of a fireworks show. Yeah. We shot fireworks at you. Yeah. And Josh. <laughs> yeah. The kids won't come this year unless Josh takes another Roman candy. <laughs> <laughs> area I thought for a second, because I had been drinking, my aim wouldn't be that good. And then, like, I started getting their speed dying. down because it's like, <laughs> Josh wasn't modulating his speed as good as you. Like, oh, yeah. you were, like, speeding up and slowing down. Well, because it was my first time running It's not the first time of me that. shooting Roman candles at you, <laughs> yeah. but it was Josh's first time. And so he's, like, running at a steady speed. And so I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I literally got to the point where it's like, yeah, if I just put a five feet in front of me, he's going to run right into the flaming ball. And uh, yeah, then I had to like intentionally start missing them. I genuinely, genuinely was like, this is just a low key, easy family party. Like, it's not going to get crazy. Yeah, one rule. Right. Did we stick to the rule that time or not? Uh, so uh, my, the one rule at my house is don't drink liquor out the bottle. Like, There's no reason that that rule is in effect. And, <laughs> right. At all. And almost every time I'll turn around and I'll see people like pull the bottle. Away. <laughs> I've never seen you actually. Hey. I, I think that was like the last time I've seen you like seriously just like super disappointed in the right. dad way. Because Jesse brought like this new bottle of whiskey and it was like a couple of us. And we're like, and we weren't like, it was early on. It was like, we were just literally trying. It, but we we didn't have shot glass, so we were just drinking out of the bottle. And you turn around, and so everyone's passing a bottle of whiskey around. You're like, guys, come on! I have one. There's one rule: no liquor out of the bottle. And we're like, I, I felt like a, a like a kid that got caught doing something bad. I'm like, sorry. It's just the one rule. Sorry. Like, like it is. Like he has one. Like we can shoot fireworks at people. Right. Well, and it's just and it's just for optics, right? Like that's no, because that a, a, every time things really devolve into it's, madness, it's, it's always like the one like key factor is that people are drinking liquor out of the when bottle. The, when the mixer, you don't need to drink liquor out of the bottle. When the mixer like, starts going into the liquor bottle because right. it's easier than making mixed drinks, and right. now the liquor bottle is just the passed drink, around right. drink, yeah. like that's when it becomes that's, problematic. It's <sighs> yeah. It's not. Think of the time you're saving. This good time saving. I have picture proof of why I ask for people not to drink liquor out of the bottle. It's because someone was Tillicum jumping out of my, at the time, inflatable pool. The world famous killer whale. That actually killed people. Yeah. Four times. So someone <laughs> who will not be named. I don't, I wouldn't invite face them back. Down. <laughs> Yeah, that's also why I have like some nasty bottles of liquor too. So when it gets to that point, we're like, "What else do you got?" Like, here, have this. Here's uh, some sambuca. Yeah, this <laughs> rice vodka that I've had for nine years. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah, yeah. Here's right. some fernet. Yeah, oh, gross. Yeah, here's some pissed. schnapps. Like when you bust out the peppermint schnapps, they're like, want, "Here you go, enjoy." Don't want people to throw up in the. Pool. Man, the Fourth of July is almost here already. Yeah, it Gosh, is you almost. Nice. Oh wow. <laughs> Hollywood's music. She calls him Hollywood. Of course, Hollywood. that is his name. It's a little yeah. inappropriate. At yes. Times. Good for her. I've, I've made a playlist. She's curated. If he will do the laser. Okay. Is my size party in the USA on, on there? It's gotta be. Okay. okay. Yeah. Every four songs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Just to remind you what we're doing. Right. <laughs> I'm down with that. Like, I made one years ago, and it was like, I just went through and, like, found as many classic rock songs and, like, you know, just even more modern pop stuff. That just mentioned that stuff. Like, and that was one of them. And it's just like, that's all I want to hear. Did Born in the on, USA. Did you put it on a tape? That actually, I, I feel could like you put you, it on a tape? That, that actually <laughs> reminded me, because when I got my Spotify wrapped, it was like one of my number one artists was Toby Keith. And I was like, <laughs> and then I remembered that. 
4th of July, I decided that we were only going to listen to Toby Keith, Keith for the yeah. last, like, four hours yeah. of the party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll def- I ran out of my fireworks stash, so I'll definitely have to re-up this year. Yeah, are the tents out yet? Yeah. That firework party wasn't last year. It was the year before, wasn't it? No, it was last year. It was last year? There's no way it was more than last year. I can't remember, because I remember just dropping fireworks off at your house one year. Well, that's... That was last year. It was no. for the kids. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. I think we skipped a year. Anywho. Yeah, no. I gotta go to the tent. Y'all got the good tents, let me know. Because I, I hung the lights up, and then we had to turn the lights off. Was that 4th of July? Dang. Sure, it wasn't it's like one of the best Memorial holidays ever. Or something? You don't. No. Fireworks are <laughs> yeah. an everyday come thing. Come to the shore. Was it, come was to the it shore. New Year's Eve? We did New Year's Eve, too. Yeah. We did both. Because Chris had the lasers... Yeah. I just remember I put the lights up, and he's like, hey, can you turn these stupid lights off? <laughs> Man, I just spent like a whole day. The lasers videos. look better in the fireworks Cementing, smoke. Yeah, they did, sure, though. Yeah. He was, yeah. like, I couldn't argue it. This is your warning that 4th of July is coming up, so if you don't like it, you can just like go elsewhere and uh, not yeah. complain about it on social media. I think like, let us have this, To please. me, if you want to complain about your dog, fine. Just do like I do. Throw firecrackers at your dog. Yeah, that way he gets it. trained. Or just right. or get him earmuffs, man. Right. Yeah. But the worst to me is the people that aren't like former service members, like that complain about like, yeah, this is terrible for veterans. Like, how many service members do you have at your house, sir? Right. Like, why don't you let? Pretty them sure there's a couple that. over here yeah. lighting the fireworks off. I think <laughs> Shane Walker is one of my favorites because every year he's like, by the way, as like a yeah. you know a veteran, like, and he's my new neighbor. Yeah, yeah. He's like, please, please shoot fireworks off. Like, yeah. it's very exciting. Hell yeah, <laughs> bring that energy to the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love. That's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I gotta stop by and see him. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, it's funny because when he moves in, he's just like, because I don't know if he's got like a little dirt bike for his for his son, Zach, and he was just talking about it. He's like, yeah, I met your other neighbor, Matt. And, you know, he's like, he said, I guess I could just drive this in the retention pond <laughs> as long as we're like discreet about it. I wasn't sure. But then he told me you took your cars in there. So <laughs> you got to test them out. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. We took the LeBaron in there. Not so my, Not our finest half hour. Yeah. Then I then I told him, I was like, then I just started taking it to the. Yeah. Adjoining neighborhood's retention pond. Right. And he's like, oh, okay, that's, that's smart. Move right that there. is the move. Plus, you might have to see a peacock if you go to that one. Happy Five Father's Day to you fathers out there. I hope it's a good weekend. Enjoy it. Stay cool. Don't pass out in the heat. Have Don't drink liquor out of the bottle. Please. <laughs>